NBCSN from the Pearl Theater at Palms Casino Resorts here in Las Vegas. Premier Boxing Champions now features 10 rounds in the Featherweights Division. The three judges ringside are Patricia Morse Jarman, Dave Moretti, and Steve Morrow. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds, Jay Nitty. Introducing first out of the red corner, wearing the black with the gold trim. His professional record, 18 wins, 13 of those coming by way of knockouts against one loss, fighting out of Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Claudio, the Matrix, Marrero. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue with red and white. As professional, his record stands at 24 wins, a dozen victories coming by way of knockouts, opposite four defeats, fighting out of Watts, California. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rico Suavecito Ramos. Ten rounds, yes, rounds. Torbien, you ready? Oh, Listo? Yeah, right. Get yeah. close. Vamos. Vamos. Vamos a trabajar. Let's go to work. Rico Ramos, 28 years of age, an Olympic alternate in 2008, and a world champ in the 122 pound weight class, and Claudio Morero. Came within one win of qualifying for the 2008 Olympics. Ramos fighting in Las Vegas for the third time. Marrero for the first time. Scheduled for 10 rounds in the featherweight division. Marrero in the black trunks at 18 and 1, 13 via knockout. He has won his last four. Ramos 24 and 4. Started his career by winning his first 20 professional bouts, but his Won just four of his last eight. Did it be feeling out process early? Always the feeling out process from any fighter. That's the key no, to see what the other fighter has. Unless you're Mike Tyson. I right. Say. <laughs> Guerrero, Southpaw, Ramos. Yes, sir. Fighting with an orthodox stance, although he is a natural left-hander. You've got like a boxing clinic going on here, you know, boxing one-on-one, one-on-two. Uh, both of these guys have great stance, working off the jab, southpaw orthodox. I think we're going to see some fireworks tonight, though. Round one, scheduled for ten. It seems like these guys are not doing anything, but they're getting the feel of each other. They're really getting the feel of each other. The vibe, rhythm, timing, how fast he is, how hard he hits. All those things take place in the very first round. Facing a southpaw, nothing new to Rico Ramos. He has faced seven left-handers throughout his career. Okay. A lot of fainting going on, a lot of upper body head movement. What you gonna do when I when I do this, when I do that? Okay, he's doing nothing. That works. Body shot by Marrero, final minute of round one. Yeah, yeah. There's no knockdown, no knockdown. You pushed him down, you all right? Don't push your head down. Box! That's a push, says referee Jay Dady. Good chess match here. This is a chess match. We're going to see a chess match tonight. Maybe in the second or third round, these guys are going to start to open up and, uh, you know, explore a little more, explore some of that un unknown territory. Rico Ramos coming off the longest layoff of his career. Over 200 days. He's not fought since last December. Guerrero last fought in February of this year. Ten seconds, go. Ten seconds remaining in round one. My time in the Navy is where I learned to be a boxer. It's where I earned my nickname. Steve U.S.S. Cunningham. The 
is where I learned to fight. What a knockdown by Cunningham. That was huge. He's knocked out. Cunningham has fled Fury. I won't go down without a fight. Well, our very own Steve Cunningham will take on Antonio Tarver at the Prudential Center in Newark, August 14th. That's just 20 days from now. What are you doing here with us, Steve? Man, I'm just enjoying myself, relaxing, but getting excited because being at fights is like I'm about to fight tonight. <laughs> August 14th in a PBC on Spike Bout. And I know, Steve, you've been training this week here in Las Vegas while preparing to call the fights tonight. Yes, yes, you know, the training never stops, the work never stops, even after a fight and back in the gym. Uh, that's just, that's just the way I live. In fact, you requested a hotel room on a high floor so that you could run up 32 flights of stairs here at the Palms. Yes, sir, yes, sir, the work never stops. Let's go, let's go, hashtag let's go. Yeah, and you know, sparring with BJ uh, earlier uh, in in June, getting him ready for this fight, put me in such good shape. You know, I came into camp ready, ready to go. You know, um, early July. So, taking this little couple days break is nothing. How much time did you spend sparring with TJ Flores? How about ten days? You know, getting him ready. His mindset is is impeccable. You know, he knows what this fight means to him, and. Um, and we'll see if he pulls it off tonight. Um, Steve, can I get a few tickets? <laughs> you got to talk to my wife and manager, Olivia. <laughs> I'll think of that. <laughs> He's running up steps in the hotel, Ray, part of your training method. I used to do that uh, when I retired. Break! When you retired. Box. <laughs> Didn't want to tire yourself out, right? Not at all. What have you guys seen here in round two? Well, it's not really too much taking place. It's still a feeling up process because of their hand speed, because of their accuracy. I'll tell you one thing that I've kind of noticed with uh, Ramos Suavecito here. He may be having issues with the height advantage and the reach advantage of a southpaw. You know, uh, Marrero's got a longer reach. He's taller and he's, he's very active. Now he's in there doing a little lot of tricks and stuff, you know, just confusing his opponent. It may be difficult for um, Ramos. Well, the style of Mario, he keeps his hands down, and he's very comfortable with that. Guerrero, five foot seven, Ramos at five five. Two inch height advantage for Guerrero from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. With a guy like Ramos, though. No matter how Holding. the fight's going, Box. we seen in his last fight, he was getting beat all the way to the last round, and he knocked the guy out. So Ramos has that explosive power and that comfortability. Hey, I know I can knock guys out late in the fight. Right, he's actually done that twice in critical fights. We're behind on points. You're holding. A one punch left hook to win the fight. Box. Final seconds, round two. Okay, he likes to go for the body. Yeah. When he goes for the body, he puts his he puts his head down right here. Even though you're paying that body shot, I need you to come with those hooks to the top. Okay? Time him. He likes all he wants to do. When you pressure him, he can't do nothing. Keep working on that. Pressure, double jab, combination. What a sweet overhand left by the southpaw Moreno. Beautiful shot. Claudio Marrero raising his record to 19 and 1. Ramos knocked down for the sixth time in his career. Big left by Marrero, knocking down Ramos. They call Mario the Matrix. All of a sudden, you don't see it. You don't see it coming. Set up that uppercut. Let's go, break that jab, faint jab. Oh. Oh, roll out. 
¡Ese! The big left from the southpaw, Claudio Marrero, victorious in his first professional bout here in Las Vegas. Back in Las Vegas to arena announcer Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 20 seconds of the third round for your winner by knockout, Claudio, the Matrix, Marrero. Claudio Marrero, victorious by a knockout, 20 seconds of round three. Our final punch stats brought to you by Applebee's. Try our bold new handhelds today. Ramos landed 22% of his punches. Marrero, 25%. Ramos, suffering the fifth loss of his career, loses for the second time here at the Palm. Suffered his first pro defeat in his first title defense right here in 2012. And the winner, Claudio Marrero, is with Kenny Rice. All right, thank you, Kenny. Claudio, it was a great fight joining us. Herman Casado, who is also the trainer and will help us out with interpretation here. So let me ask you about the knockout. How did it all unfold? Pregunta Kenny que cómo del knockout, cómo todo se, se preparó para el knockout. ¿Qué pasó? No, tú sabes cuando tú te llevas de una esquina que han trabajado suficiente y se han sacrificado y te llevas de tu esquina, todo sale bien. Kenny he says that um, he prepared very hard for the fight and he was listening to the corner and the instructions and, and we saw that the, the overhand was open. As far as the progress, everybody wants to see a fighter improve. What a performance he had tonight. So I'll ask you kind of, Herman, what are you seeing out of him? And then you can ask Claudio what he thinks he's done. Uh, well, I mean, definitely, like you said, there is progress in every fight. Uh, he learned a lot from the championship fight that uh, he had a split decision loss on. So fight by fight after that, he has improved in not only throwing more punches and being the aggressor and moving forward as a southpaw, but definitely be thinking 